It's a master's review. Look at the green, huh? And congratulations to the winner. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We talk about some club builds while listening to the masters. The fact that I actually went to Augusta, probably not what you're thinking. All next and what's in my drawers golf talk. <laughs> Welcome back to the Golf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and we talk about golf club repairs, golf club reviews, and golf club fittings, all so your scores can go low. So, what did we do? Well, we had the Masters, right? The Masters, obviously, it's been all over the news, the radio, if you watch some. Scotty Scheffler basically won it. You know, normally what you can see is, you know, he didn't win it, that other people may have failed, but... Or you have the other side that's true is that he just outplayed the field, much like Tiger-esque stuff. And, but in this particular case, both are true. Both were true. Uh, while people were making bogeys and double bogeys and whatnot, he was making pars and birdies, and he was just traveling away from the field. So super-duper solid play. Uh, was a record setter in something about, what, winning two in the first three appearances. I mean, the man's the man's on running on all cylinders right now. And, uh, you know, the best part about all of that was he was talking about uh, the most important part of all this was his family, and he was dying to get back to the house so he could be there for their child's birth. So, you know, it sounds like he's got it all squared away in the bag, ready to go. So good for him, right? If you guys saw something else out there, I know there was some, you know, there's always some sort of drama. There's always some sort of, uh, other stuff going on, and then we get, we got to give a nod to Lud Ludwig Adberg, Adverg, Adberg, and uh, for being a good first timer coming in second. That doesn't happen very often, and we got to give a shout out to our low amateur from OSU, uh, a grad student that came out there and made it past everybody else, beat a bunch of pros. So we got to give a nod to all those guys. So well done, guys. Good job. Okay. So, we talked about, we're going to work backwards here a little bit. So, we're going to go with my statement first with, I went to Augusta. And in reality, it'll be, we went to Augusta. No, not the Masters, a different Augusta. So, let me let me put this story down for you guys. We're going to go a little bit off topic, but this ought to be a little fun. So, Mrs. McGough and I decided to take off to go down to Kentucky, where, of course, there's bourbon to be made and to be bought. And our first stop was Buffalo Trace, right? We go to Buffalo Trace, and it's rainy and it's nasty. And, you know, there's a website to see what they might be offering. And they changed their mind, and we got uh, something that we had already had, but I wasn't in jail. So we ended up picking it up with uh, some travelers. Uh, we were disappointed. And Robin said, hey, at least we're having fun together and we're all right. So we decided, to, since we had so much time, we went to a place called J. Mattingly. And that would be this place. A bourbon blending experience. So these guys are directly across the street. We said, well, let's take a shot because we didn't, you know, when you go to do these things, you really want to plan them if you want to be successful. And we had a day to figure it out. And typically that doesn't work out real well. However, we walked in there and uh, we were talking about the, the difference in all their things that they offer. And they have one's called the tour experience where you get to go down and you sample some drums. And when you sample some drums, you get to taste the drums. And when you write down all the stuff that you're talking about, then that the guy on my right who ended up being... He ended up being the master mixer for Jay Mattingly. So we had the number one guy, super good guy, uh, ex-school professor and fellow Irishman. And once you pick out the barrels, he, you show him what you like, and he kind of reads you a little bit. And so he fills up a small graduated tube of a mixture of what he thinks that you will like. And you sample that. And if you like it, then he turns around and he puts it into a much bigger graduated cylinder in the same ratio. Now, this whole tour experience is that's what it's all about, is to make you your own bottle that you enjoy. Then you put it into a bottle of your choice, uh, put your own label on it, put your own cork in it, or you could dip it in some wax. We went with the cork. 
So after we got done, we enjoyed what was left of it. And that was our man right there. As you can tell, he's only a little bit Irish. And then this is what our bottle looked like. Called it Mick Rye because it, because it was a rye. And, uh, and this is from Jay Mattingly too. It's called the Frankfurt Hayride. Anyway, so with that, so we got it. We walked in there, treated like kings. It was really good. And so off we went to Castle and Key. Castle and Key is the original uh, Taylor Distillery. As you can tell, it looks like a castle. I had that part of Castle and Key. And there's the old Taylor logo on the top. And they're in the midst of rebuilding. You know, you got the old uh, building in the back with the stuff in the front. And this is the key part of it, the where it looks like a key. We'll see another picture here in a minute. But if you can tell, they still have uh, older equipment that they're still using and going through. And this is, well, part of their water supply. But if you look, it's super duper clear. And then here's the back side of that key. And so uh, E.M. Taylor, E.H. Taylor, sorry. H. Taylor got the idea of this from visiting the Queen of England and visiting Rome and trying to make that a tourist destination back in the very, very, very early 1900s. And so he was quite ahead of his time, as the case may be. And then we got into it. And there's some internal, you see the, it's old meeting new, right? You get the old woodwork and then you got some of the new stuff. Now, secondary to that is they have a really nice place to go visit, which is good for weddings and whatnot. And when that place is in bloom, it's, it's got to be extraordinarily nice to see. And then last but not least, we walked out with a barrel head with their uh, laser print on it. Mrs. McGough picked that one out specifically, so we were good to go. All right, last, last but not least, we went to Augusta, the Augusta Distillery. The Augusta Distillery is in uh, Augusta, Kentucky. This is their building another super old building and this is how you when you go past their walkway you walk through something like that that's what it says on the side to give that idea that you're walking through a barrel and th personally i thought it was a set of ribs but <laughs> very very cool you walk into it and this is what you walk into uh they are known for their buckners and they have a route eight and there's another one and it absolutely leaves me but i will say they all uh, all their whiskeys have won an award of some variety. Uh, best bourbon in the world, some gold medals, and gold medal last year, and a silver. So these guys know how to blend some whiskey. And there's the biggest one. So uh, they are in the midst of building a distillery. We got to see it, and it's about, uh, I'd say it's about 85% done. It's all in the, you know, the hardest parts that last 5 to 10%. And they're, you know, controllers. Uh, probably some breakers to put in that kind of stuff and then cleaning it out and getting permission. And there is the, uh, the, the guy that actually started this thing initially, except for my fat head is in it. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, these are the guys, the guy on my, on my right, your left, as you're looking at it, he is the owner and, uh, he's the guy that has the, the award winning palette to make things, uh, go. And the guy next to him was his, number one and they both and he helped me put some of these barrels into the back of my vehicle and uh, so we ended up we walked away with a couple empty barrels and just some more fun to see and the very end of this is the is the scores that mrs mcgolf and i got through so you can see it was not a bad trip it started out kind of kind of yucky and ended up being one heck of a trip all righty. So now that we've done all that, <laughs> we've done all that. So give a nod, right? The the Jay Mattingly is super duper nice. Castle and Key is nice to look at. And Augusta, super group of folks. Recommend them highly if you're in that, that neck of the woods. In fact, this is part of that right there. They're all just a bunch of good, good tight-knit group of folks. All right. As far as building goes. So, Mrs. McGolf had to give me a list. We got a lot done in the last weekend. Uh, we sent at least three sets of clubs to Texas. One in Temple, one in McKinney, and the other one in Canyon Lake. And the last one that we got, and we got to talk to him last, yesterday while we were building, uh, was Carmel, Indiana, which is just north of Indianapolis. We have some friends that live just north of that. 
And uh, it was really, really good. So what did we build? Well, the first one was, the last one was these, Tacomos. Uh, the Tacomo set, and if you notice, they are not your normal set. They are the Chrome set, okay? And they had some other KBS shafts in them, and he wanted uh, these KBS shafts placed in them. He took, we took out some 110s and put in the 70s. And as I talked to the gentleman, it turns out he's a retired individual in the liquor business, so... He's going to have more time to play. And, and we had a lot of these. Those are the Lampkin UTX and with the cords. These things actually feel pretty good. I, uh, I like their texture. The look of them is really nice. Uh, I think that they're going to be a big hit. So that grip, that shaft, and those heads. Now, just to take us further on, if you haven't done it already, like and subscribe. Hit that, hit that thumbs up down there so everybody can get the notifications out there. That is going to be the topic of tomorrow's video on building that. I don't go through every step. I go through some of the bigger steps, some of the concerns that you go through when you have these special clubs that you got to go through. Turns out it was a pretty good set. I mean, as far as uh, applying everything that we would normally do. All right. And another one just to let you guys know was another set of 243s, a special request. This was going to Texas, and it had some the Gripmaster leather grips on them. Gripmaster is normally used when you have real humid conditions, real stickiness, uh, and they're typically a, a stickier type grip. Now, these guys weren't as sticky as some of the other ones I've had that were uh, of that mahogany color. And those things were super sticky. These guys, I think once you get to wearing on them, they'll grip you back. And we ended up with uh, some Acra Steel. Okay, Acra Steel. Uh, that was different for me too. <clears throat> Acra Steel is kind of a the best of both worlds blend of the dynamic gold on one end and the rifle shaft, the regular rifle shaft on the other. And it, although it be stepped, but the technology is there i.e. they're associated with true temper and uh that was the first one now when they first came out they were built as an environmentally friendly shaft because when you paint they when you paint it, it there's some impact to the environment with washing and that kind of stuff so they used a different paint scheme in order to get on there i think since then they've abandoned that and they've moved it to a different factory and so they don't do that anymore but the logo on it does look very cool, and it was going with the Masters theme to begin with, so we were good with that one. I want to see what this one looks like. And here's another set that we were sending out, and it had the, uh, oh, these were the, some Mizunos, oh, or, or no, I don't have the head picture. <laughs> I believe these were, these might have been some Wilsons. We went through a lot of Wilson product in the last week to two weeks uh between the dyna forge and the dyna power been doing very very well so that was probably that one <clears throat> and not to disappoint you guys we did cook out on the grill pork loin there it is barbecued pork loin on the small rec tech it turned out pretty good 275 about hour and a half for that little bit and it cooked straight through is very very nice okay before we get going to even again um before we get going again what we are doing is uh <clears throat> fittings we did some fittings this week and uh we did we did one for a very low handicapper and got him situated and got him into he, he was liking the mizuno product we did very well with him uh he's plays to a one and uh turns out his dad immigrated from ireland so he's first generation. That was very, very cool. Got to talk to both of them. Uh, he's, you know, been in California since the 70s. So a lot of his Irish is, uh, has been has been diluted. But he does go back. That was very fun. Got to talk to both of them. Uh, we had a, a gentleman in here that uh, I can't remember that he, he was uh, afflicted with a particular muscular disease and for the life of me i have just lost what it was 
Oh, I wish I could remember. Anyway, the dude, uh, it, it affects with the gripping. And uh, she here comes Mrs. McGough to tell me. Anyway, this guy hit lasers. Absolutely hit lasers straight as an arrow. Cerebral, Cerebral palsy. That's what it is. Oh, really? Okay, they were Wilson, so I was on the ball. <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, and the, uh, so cerebral palsy, the dude was hitting lasers, obviously just not real far. So we lightened the load, and he actually started hitting draws. He had the inside-out swing. It was just really, really nice. He keeps his balance. He's good all day. So we gave him, got, got really lightweight on him and started gaining some speed, and very, 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 very well done. And then we had a, a few other folks, and it turned out that uh, one was a double check to see whether or not the stuff was okay, and a couple of quick tweaks, and they were good to go from a previous fitting, and uh, and then we were in pretty good shape. All righty, so uh, lessons learned this time: don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, you, you got you let the performance of the golf tell you what the person needs. And you will find that you will figure out that you're giving them the best that they can, uh, that they can use. All righty. Let's get to the top of this stuff. Keep going. There we go. Charlie made it in here first. How you doing, buddy? 4337. Nice. Well done, man. You're tearing it up. I have yet to get out. It, it, it rained like pouring water out of a boot on Friday and part of Saturday and Saturday turned real nice at the end. Sunday was real nice, but it would have, I would have needed my snorkel in order to go out and play. There was one, I mean, we're out here and we're still mowing or Mrs. McGolf is still mowing and, uh, it's still wet. So it'll probably be next weekend, this coming weekend when I can get out. Manuel, good evening, Jim Robin and Golf Guru brethren worldwide. If I take the time to measure shaft frequency, is there a chart that says 259 cycles stiff or regular? Does it matter? Uh, <clears throat> so, Manuel, the as we all know, shaft flex, which is i.e. frequency, is truly up to what the manufacturer will describe right now in each one of these and the manufacturer even in even in these guys uh are these true flexes i'd say in a lot in some of the cases yeah but you get down here a little further where i get into the gh maneuver where the butt section is very very soft it won't come out like an r so now you have to know about shaft profile <coughs> And, and shaft profile. And, and when you know about shaft profile, then you can assume, you know, that, that it's going to be softer where something that's a little firmer will be a little higher and you know what to expect. Now, as far as asking your 259 cycles, the 259 would depend on what length it is at, right? Because a frequency, uh, a, a frequency machine measures the cycles, the up and down the cycles, right? But on a chart, on the chart that goes here and here, this might be cycles and this might be length or this might be the cycles and that might be length, whatever works for you. And then what you'll have is a lot li lines of flex either going this way or going this way, depending on how your chart is laid out. And, and those lines of flex will coordinate to that 250, 259, that kind of thing. All right. So. For me, at 250, and I'm just off the top of my head, if I was around 250 at 44 inches, I would be in the stiff range. So at 259, you'd probably be somewhere 43 and a half to 43-ish, and it all depends on the slope of your chart. Uh, the, <clears throat> the one I got is calibrated to my machine. Uh, Edgar Evans, I think that was his name, Edgar, his last name was Edgar. He was a PCS guy, and he made a chart that would uh, that was similar to a the original rifle chart with a less uh, aggressive slope, and it's worked for me for years. 
<clears throat> now what you have, one of the better ones out there now that, you know, you can use to fit is Golfworks has one that has ranges of what regular, what stiff, and all this other is in comparison what they're using out there. And if you're looking for that, I would get Golfworks in their range chart. <clears throat> all righty. Nice, Charles. Do you have a TV in the build room so you can watch as you're building? No, I do not. Uh, that would be absolutely dangerous for me, Charlie. <laughs> I would not get any building done. I am easily, hey, look at that. That's awesome. But what I did do in the room that I'm in, there's a there's a TV right there, and I've also got my my screen, both of which those atoms have speakers. And I called up the CBS coverage and I turned up the TV and I listened to the TV as I was into in the next room. And when I got into too many commercials, I also had uh, Sirius on listening to him in that direction. Charlie saying thank you. Mr. Jim Anderson. Hello, Jim and Robin, still on a wet East Central Scotland, 25 minutes from the old course. Nice. Well, that's not too far away. Well done, Scotty, and tribute to his caddy. Excellent work and fantastic work, guys. Yes, you know what? They did work very well together, and I'm glad that they came up very successful. I really do. I'm, I'm glad for the man. Oh, the, one of the funnies that I got to watch, I got to watch only a handful of holes, and not and I only of course Scotty in the last two holes, and then I got to see Tiger and uh, the amateur Nick. I think that was his name. Uh, and going through a few holes. And the funny part was his buddy, who was a sophomore in college, was caddying for him. And what did he do? He brought out that big monster staff bag and made him hump that staff bag all over the place. The damn thing was as big as he was. And I thought that was funny. But uh, it would just look like Mutt and Jeff running around. Bill Nauman played the Wilson Staff golf ball last week. Very impressed with the ball. Don't know if it was the if it was the ball, but seemed to hit everything long. I'm here to tell you, Bill, that Staff ball is a real deal, and it's unfortunate that Wilson doesn't put a little bit more into the advertising of that. Uh, it is a they did a massive improvement on the golf ball. Uh, I do, I do like it a lot. I think it could stand right. You know, when you cost per performance, it's certainly got to be in the top two or three. There's Matt 67. Now oh, we're used to seeing these numbers from you. Had a chance to shoot my best round 65. It didn't happen. It's nice to see 67 to my name in a tournament. All right. Tournament. Well done, bud. <clears throat> Always under pressure. Matt is a man that just thrives for that pressure. And why does club fitting work? <laughs> well, let's do this. I will say club fitting doesn't always work. Uh, I will say it has a super high percentage though, because let's start at the beginning. It depends on the type of club fitting that you get. All right. Going to a demo day and hitting a bunch of golf clubs just to see how one performs over the other is not a club fitting, okay? That is a club trying, not a club fitting. And But if you go to a club fitting where you're in a controlled environment and they're isolating particular parameters and somebody's there that knows what they're doing as far as being able to see how you deliver the the club to the ball and your preferences, then you get that. So why is that, why is that all important? Well, you know, number one, we have to know what your preferences are. Uh, if, and if your preferences are something that doesn't work, you have, you have to have that conversation of, okay, I know you really, really, really like these blades. However, this distance club this this player's distance club is much more suited to your game and tell them why you know and when they see the differences now sometimes you might be overridden but the uh you have to do that as as so that they are underwear 
So when they go and they go and get these clubs that they picked instead of what a fitter selected, that at least they understand what happened. Now the other one is, is let's say you they're all they're like have no no biases, give me what works and everything like that. Well, I'm still here to tell you there is a cosmetic appeal to certain golf clubs, and and that will show. There's certain feels to golf clubs, and that will show. And and then once you get them in the certain spec, the good swings will start coming out. And then all of a sudden, you've got a setup that the golfer can use and use constantly. Now, of course, yes, there will be some changes through the year. However, they're not so gross or so grand unless you're really striving to change your swing that the clubs will go out of fit. Much like when we did the fitting to, uh, this weekend. Oh, I made some big swing changes. Oh, okay. So what do we need? Let's take a look. What do you need to do? You literally need to bend it up a degree and that's it. So it wasn't huge swing changes, but it was probably huge to the golfer. All right, that kind of stuff. So why does it work? Well, because you as the golfer are being analyzed as your swing tendencies and then the fitter is supposed to take those tendencies and apply them and not only the grip, but the shaft, the weight, the flex, the type of club head, which means the sole, the offset, the style, in order to put the best equipment under you. And then when you're all figured that out, then it's all about picking the amount of the equipment. You know, not three through pitch and wedge is a dead animal. Four through de pitch and wedge is also a very dead animal. Five through a gap wedge pretty much what a lot of people get now if your swing speed gets to so low and you get this that your clubs start hitting the five and the six go together seven eight go together and so on why carry all of them spit spin it apart and get that with custom fittings tend to be custom choices and get what fits in your bag and that's why that works there's brendan from ireland what do you say sir Evening all, what's the difference in the steel fiber I-95 and the I-95 constant weight? That's what CW stands for, Brennan. I'm not big steel fiber guy. However, I think I know this one. All right. So I-95s can come in, they can come in a parallel tip, which means they come in at about 41 inches or 41 to 42 inches in length. And what happens is club makers, they tend to, will, will trim it, and they have a little more flexibility with, uh, with setting up how the club will play. Constant weights, on the other hand, will come in a taper tip fashion, and those taper tips come in distinct, discrete lengths. So the pitching wedge comes in in one, the nine iron might come in a half inch higher, uh, and so on, all the way up to the two iron, as the case may be, and or three possibly, and and all those different weights, all those different weight or all those different lengths, all weigh the same, i.e., constant weight. And it can't. What can you tell between the rest of them? The feel, honestly, is real. Unless you're a very, we'll say, you know, you have a very delicate touch. Uh, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. However, what will happen is the stuff at the top will be a little bit more flexible and the stuff at the bottom will be a little bit more stiff than, say, all the way across with the IC, with the regular 95s. So that's the difference. All righty. <clears throat> Charlie, Jim's thinking of going to lighter shaft, probably in the Modus 105R. Would you recommend the Pro... 95 new pro blah, 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 blah. uh going lower if you like the moda shaft i would go with the neo okay i would go with the neo i'm really digging on that neo however here's the difference the neo is closer towards a light modus shaft where hey it's moving it started moving on me again it saw me let's see if we can make it stop okay so the uh, the Neo is a light modus shaft where the GH is a shaft that is uh, a little more friendly in the butt section, a little higher ball flight, 
if you were fighting a a fade, it would be actually one to go with. You'd be surprised the snap that you get through it. But if you're enjoying the way that the Modus feels, the Neo and the 950 would be much, much better. Okay. It works because your swing is unique and you need a club that meets your... There. Well, see, after me talking about it for five minutes, Matt cuts it down to two, two sentences. But that's about right. Outstanding round, and I get, I agree. <clears throat> There's Krister. How you doing, buddy? I haven't seen too much in the way of Instagram from you here as of late. Hopefully, you're not under the weather, I, other than the rain. Uh, hopefully, all it's going right. Yeah, let's figure out how that went. We'll get it here in a minute. Thanks, Charlie. It's actually fun to hit shots and play competitive environment. Well, look at him go. All right, what did Krister say? Last week, finally ordered the woods and wedges. What did he get? He got the Titleist SR49 driver, the SR3 fairway wood, the SR2. Is that a fairway wood or a hybrid? It might be a hybrid. All with the, oh, went with a graphite design, ADADI, 7X. Woo. All right. Now that, that graphite design, that AD, uh, that is a very, very, very popular shaft. It would be that guy right there. Yep. That guy right there. SM10s, 50F, 54S, 12D. Good combos. Not bad. Not bad at all. Good job. Fittings went well. Now you got to wait and get them. There you go. So this is going to be, uh, so that's a good, Charlie, you're absolutely the best straight man ever. Uh, so we got a set of, Mizunos, and we got a set of Mizunos, and the and the gentleman got fit here, but ordered them online, and he says they just seem totally out of whack. There's something wrong with them. They're too stiff. They're too long. They're too something, and uh, he said, but he sent me the seven iron demo that he just absolutely kills, and so now what my video is going to be, we're going to blueprint his his irons. And try and adjust them back into the way that the way that the seven iron works for the for the golfer. And I looked at their seven iron, his seven iron versus their seven iron, and there's already there's already three that you know if you want them. We're talking about being exact now because he says he's very picky, exact, right? And the length is wrong, the lie is wrong, and the flex is off by a quarter of a flex. I'm going to give that a pass, but the other ones, if you want to be absolutely 100% on the button, they're off. And so now what's going to happen is I've got to peel off all the grips, all the grips off of them, and and then and me, including the demo, and start measuring. And so I have a, a naked shaft so that we can make sure absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt that's what's going to happen. And before that, we got to make sure all the lie angles are correct and the loft angles are correct in order to make all this go. And uh, that might be, and th this is going to be one heck of a video on blueprinting and the difference between off the rack and what you get for somebody like me. So not only will it be good, but it'll also be uh, quite the advertising thing too. My wallet hates me. <laughs> yes, I can see that, sir. Manuel's telling it, Matt he had a good round. 10 to 14 days. That's actually good considering going coming all the way into Sweden. That's great. I'm wondering if there's a place in the UK or Europe that's making them for him to turn them around that fast. There's Peter. What's going on, my friend? Myrtle Beach played Castle Pines and oh, that's right. You went up to Colorado last week. It was a beautiful course, 75, 72, 73, and won this gross senior. Peter, you are just the man when it comes to this kind of stuff. Good job. Let's see what kind of hardware they sent you this time. That ought to be good. It will get over it eventually. <laughs> no doubt, right? No doubt. Peter, very nice rounds. Good and steady. You are correct. It's particularly in a foreign course, Charlie. 
in a foreign course. Yeah, that's he's 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 got it going on. All righty. Congrats, Peter. Oh, look at here. There's Aloha. That's Matt. How you doing, buddy? All righty. As we get talking to Robin here, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and that like and subscribe if you would. And we'll keep going. No grandkids sports tonight, so I'm able to sit in. Well, way to go, dude. Grat. That's awesome. I did get to see we were following some uh, uh, guy that put, put Robin and I up for a night in uh, Florida and uh, waiting for it. He was a, a motorcycle cop in New Jersey, and his wife was a dispatcher. And they had made enough money to finally leave New Jersey and go down to Florida. And they have a very, very, very nice house that is finally done being built. And uh, they are living the life now. And good for them. And I just saw a picture where he was standing at the old course on the Swilkin Bridge. And so I hope he's playing it well. Good man. Swing it! The putter is the only club in the bag that's not titleless. We'll stick with the ping pal. After what I saw you do with it, I'd agree. No doubt. Phil K from Austin spent the week on a very windy, no Carolina coast. Wife said, no golf for you. Just like the soup Nazi, no golf for you. What's up with that, man? North Carolina coast. What? Man, you were, st you were right there. You're right there. Well, hopefully you got back and you could get a few rounds in. Mark Nat. Here's a new name. Got an old bonded BZ with a broken 350 shaft. That's too bad. There doesn't appear to be many 350 options available. Should I shim a 355 or do you have a better solution? Thanks. Actually, yes. Uh, use the shim. There's a 335 to 350 uh brass shim that you can use uh there is very uh because the outside diameter of that head is not going to be grossly big all it is, is the inside diameter of the hosel so you get yourself a standard collared ferrule that will fit a 335 and you will pretty close you'll be pretty close all right now there is another thing out there that's a twofer and it is a what they call a universal shim and it is a plastic piece and it is it's a ferrule with a with the actual sleeve underneath of it that does the same thing as a shim so you you braid your tip you put the glue on it you work this uh universal adapter universal shim on there and then you got it and there the the sleeve is cut in has holes cut into it so you can see the shaft and then you put the glue on the outside and then you put that whole rig into the head and you're you're bonding right away so either way works right whatever you're comfortable with but yes the answer is yes and you're right there's not very many 350s so case in point for your ideas 350s were actually ideas made by the oems the idea was and i don't have a club head but we can use this when they were being when they were being designed it was with club heads that looked a lot like this all right even like that no hosel. All right. They went right through. They were bore throughs. And what was happening was, is a lot of amateur golfers were hitting right here, right here in the heel. And they were snapping golf clubs. And in response to that, what happened, particularly in Callaway and or Taylor or Tylus, so all of a sudden you started seeing a big ferrule pop up right here. And it became a 350 shaft that went through there. And what that did is that put a little beef on the end of the club so that when somebody hit the hosel rocket, that it wouldn't snap the shaft. Tend to work pretty good. And, uh, and that kind of transcribed itself into like the rocket balls and things like that for the very exact same reason. Pass my prime. Is there a site to get golf club specs without trying to get them? Without trying to get them for the OEMs, finding specs from a lot of them is like trying to access the national secrets. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. Uh, it depends on how far back you want to go. 
typically what I've been doing here in the past, and it depends on how far back, if you were like five-year-old club, you could typically type it in and the OEM golf sites will still have it, right? They'll give you the lofts and the lies and the lengths. You may not get stuff like measured in offsets anymore. You might get a swing weight or two, that kind of stuff. I've been, I've been having a lot of success with that here as of late. Uh, another place. Mm, there was a place that you could find a lot of this stuff. I don't know if Golfworks had it or not. They did a lot of measuring. They did a lot of measuring for their uh, for their their playability stuff, but I don't know if it took into account the actual length of the golf club or not. There's a lot to be found there. But what I've been doing here as of late is uh, going to the actual o- – well, I just type it in. I don't even go to the OEM site because it, all it wants to do is sell you golf clubs. You go and Google – that and it, what it does it back doors into that and i would try it that way nope they have an augusta in kentucky they have an augusta in kentucky however it is on the ohio river is literally across the across the way from ohio and uh it's right down the street from maysville kentucky uh, maysville doesn't may not mean anything to you guys but uh maysville is is about mm, an hour, hour and 15 minutes from here, from this place. And then the Augusta is just right along the, you follow the river line and, and there you are. It does have a, it has a, a ferry that leaves Maysville and goes down the Ohio River and pulls into Augusta. And, and Augusta, you know, I was like, it's six and one and a half dozen the other. You spend the time to park your ferry, park on the ferry, drive across and it's the same amount of time as opposed to driving but it's it's if you know it's nostalgic that kind of thing however we did find out this is something augusta augusta is the home to a i believe his name was nick clooney nick clooney was a journalist in cincinnati had a very 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 fine journalistic career his sister was mary clooney and her son is George Clooney. How about that? There, so that's where the Clooney family came from. And they, uh, I think one of the relations still runs an antique store in town. So it's pretty cool. We haven't had that chance to investigate that very much. So maybe one day. So if you had a one day stop and you had to just stay overnight, they have the Augusta Distillery. George's dad is Nick. I thought that was the, he thought it was the uncle. Oh, the other way around, kind of reverse. So not bad. Rosemary Clooney, not Mary Clooney, Rosemary. Yeah. So look at that. A big, big TV showtime family. Anyway, so if you go stop there, you can go to the distillery. They got the beehive, which is a restaurant. And there's also a nice little tin room uh, hotel there. Did you get lost in all the bourbon blenders in the in the bourbon bender place? Yes. Well, I tell you what, all you had to do is go straight downstairs. But the the conversation there, Charlie, was uh, was awesome. The conver- the they I I grilled that guy. He was the master blender, so I put him to the test, and I asked him because they go out and they pick barrels and they put them together and and they make. They make stock upstairs. They have a uh, 030, I think it was a something 30, which Mrs. McGolf got because for some reason she thinks she's 30. And it was very, very good. Then their upper tier one was a mixture blend just like I did. Well, they did it for about a thousand bottles. And a couple of those are really good. This one in, in point right there. Very, very good. But yeah, worth worth every worth every dime. I went, my wallet walked out of there just like Christer was talking about his wallet. My wallet was screaming at me when we walked out of there on that one. Here we go. Swing it. I knew Christer was going to say something. If Ludwig hadn't put the ball in the drink on 11, he could have challenged Scheffler. You are 100% correct, sir. That's what put him out of contention. And uh, But you know what? The, the way he carried himself, he seemed like he was just playing in the moment. And people are expecting a lot of good things from him. 
There's Jim saying hello. He's on Facebook. Yeah, you know what? And he's a tall. I don't. They kept saying he was over six foot. I don't know how tall he was, but they say he's a really big cat. Steve Bird, what do you say, man? It's been a bit. Hello from England. I've just purchased a new Ben Ross Pro Forge putter. You know what? You are the you're like the third guy to ask me about Ben Ross. And as I understand it, uh, they are, you know, I've seen a couple. They're kind of, I'm going to kind of akin them to a direct to consumer type golf club. And, and they get, you know, I watched Rick Seals uh, check them out and he didn't have anything bad to say about them. Uh, they looked. Uh, they looked very professionally made. They looked very professionally assembled. And you know what? And it, and Steve, it real if the thing looked like a brick on a stick and it made putts, it wouldn't matter, right? I would you I would play that in an instant. And uh, but yeah, I've not. Let's put it this way: I've not heard a thing negative about Ben Ross. So we go with that. There we go. For the rye, although I haven't had any booze for months. Well, good for you, sir. And I knew it was you. Matt Moey. There we go. My buddy. I was supervised. I was, oh, surpri supervised. I was surprised that Lugwood was using the TR290 degree set to 975. Well, he probably brings it around a little bit differently than you, bud. But, yeah. You know, Robin talking to the folks. Charlie, what shaft is he using it in? Well, that's a good question. Oh, and just so happens, Krister knows. The Black 6X. Well, look at that. So, does that mean Krister's more manly than Ludwig? Huh? How many treasures did you bring back from the trip? Uh, well, let's see. I can show you that. Give me a second. The treasures. These are the first set of treasures right here bang those are the first set right there and as you can see travelers weller buffalo trace the next three are from jay mattingly actually the next four are from jay mattingly and the one of the buckners is from augusta and those three are from castle and key you notice one of them is clear that is a vodka for mrs mcgolf this is a rye and i believe that is a bourbon now what other treasures? We brought back a couple of, uh, Mrs. McGolf got a nice uh, hoodie sweatshirt. That was uh, quite the deal. It was surprising, but, you know, the traditional, got a couple of glasses with the logos on them and uh, went from there. The only reason why I don't have any other Buckners is that they didn't have them. They had the Route 8, which I just didn't, it didn't set my palate. Uh, and, and so we decided not to go buying it. But So that's what we did. All righty. Phil K saying hello. I thought it was you. Yep. Christer, that is my way. He said it at 7.5. There you go. There's Kent. What do you say, sir? From a very wet and windy Halifax. It's been pissing down since October, and I'm getting a little tired of it now. Well, yes, I would imagine. All right, Mark Nat wants to know if there's an educational track for somebody interested in becoming a master club builder but is not interested in being a fitter. Well, there is. Um, the one course, there's a couple of courses. One you could go to, I believe Mitchell has one that's out that you can go visit. If you didn't want to go all the way into Detroit, which Detroit, I don't know about how brave you are. Uh, but golf works has a mail in, has a over the internet mail in type course that you could go through and that will get you started. Uh, becoming the master club builder does take time and it does take some effort and you would have to start with that course first and go from there. All right. To kind of give you, not to depress you, but to kind of give you an idea, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. And I went to I went to Golf Works very first class, 
which was a club building and club fitting class. It was a long, long, it was a week long class. Then I went back and I took another week long class that they had. And they have a shaft class that's really informative. And then they had a master's class that I've been doing this for about eight to 10 years and thought I had it all going on. And went in there and sat with guys that were there that were had twice as much experience as I did. And I'm here to tell you, I learned probably as much from those guys as I did when I was in the class. And, and it was really, really fun to talk with those guys and really glean that knowledge from them. And we sat in there and we worked on golf clubs and talked about philosophies for an entire week. It was awesome. All right. Those are those. And then, of course, I've also done the uh, Professional Club Makers Society, which is defunct now and got all their classifications, which by far and away was the most difficult with a th- set of 300 question tests. And then you had to do a uh, practical. Some were building clubs to exact specifications. Some were doing fitting. Some were doing repairs, that kind of stuff. And uh, if you missed one, you failed the whole thing. And so it, it was a, it was a definitely a big deal. Uh, there's other works that you can get a hold of that will help you. Again, golf works has a golf club building thing. And although not a fitting thing, Tom with has a couple of books that were, that are easy reads that can help you be a build, a better builder. And those two would be out there. I would, I would, uh, recommend those highly. Darren, there's Darren Loop, the leprechaun, hit left of set left side of the fairway on 90% of his drives. Really? You hit 95% of your drives left side of the fairway. Playing 36 holes past Saturday. Thank you so much. All right, so you guys remember me talking to you about I fit a guy who's just this big, brutish, he's this big, strong guy, and he, he was a shorter fellow. He was like the perfect leprechaun. Red beard, hat that came in with a skidlet, the whole nine yards. It was awesome. And these big muscles, turns out he's a, a uh, he does uh, uh, deep tissue uh, massages, and he's a, a therapist of that variety. And very good at his job. He's got a he's got a a, a, a handshake like an anvil, and uh, just big. And he would he couldn't hit the left hand side of the fairway. Just couldn't do it. And we worked with him and worked with him, worked with him. And by the end of the fitting, I had him going left, and uh, we set him up to go left. And here he is, ninety five percent. That is awesome. Thank you. Well done, dude. That's awesome. Did you get to sample all of those? Charlie, almost. Um, almost. Uh, I did. I got to try the Travelers. That's the reason why I picked it up. It's nothing to, you know, run down to Kentucky or liquor store to get, but it is a pretty decent whiskey. Uh, it makes. I think it would make for a really good uh, mixer, much like Buffalo Trace. Uh, the Wellers is Wellers. It's okay. It's not, you know, again, I like it. It's just not go fly and go get it. Uh, the antique I would like to try because I think that would be much better. Uh, the the Mattingly's, the one, the Jay Mattingly and that one, yes, I tried all of those, and that is exactly why I got them. Uh, they're very smooth. They were the first bourbons that I got that when you go to smell them or taste them that you didn't get this whole uh, just – alcohol smell burning sensation it, it came out as something to drink very you know not syrupy but uh very smooth i guess that's the best way to come across it and then the uh the castle oh and then the buckners yes i got to try the buckners and they had a three barrels that we went by and the three barrels they were okay there was there was one out of the three that was really good and we could have mixed our own in that one. Uh, we had, we decided against it because we knew we were going to buy barrels. And then we tried. I got a flight, and uh, the Route Eight was good. The Buckner's was a hundred times better, and their last one was okay. And uh, but the Buckner's, ma, whoo, and uh, that was a ten. They got a thirteen, a fifteen, 
and a 17 is coming out on a certain particular date that Mrs. McGolf and I are going to run down there, although she doesn't think so, but I believe we are. Get what I mean? So that's where we're going to go. But yeah, for the most part, that's the reason why I got what I got. All righty. We say, Matt, it is me indeed. About to go coach my high school team as they are ready for the Island Championships and then on to states for at least three of them. Nice. Look at you giving them the way to go. You are the man. Now, the real question is, you're going to be able to repeat that awesomeness. That's awesome, though, dude. Well done. Glad to see you're getting through it. Taylor Vanny, what do you say, buddy? Who ended up winning the Masters? Uh, well, if you haven't, oh, <laughs> all you got to do is turn <laughs> turn on the internet, brother. Uh, it's Mr. Scotty Scheffler. Hello, oh, Darren. All your irons are finished except for your Callaway wedge. You can get them whenever you like. Look at that. That would be Scotty. We knew that. Ronji, any chance to demo the Q10? No, I have not. Or the pings. I do not get them down here. So I'm in little bitty town of Waverly. It's now, I don't even think it classifies as a town. It is a village. And uh, Ping doesn't come down this way. Although I will say the Ping rep for this area is an extraordinarily good human being. If I was to call him and ask, he could probably hook me up and I could do it. Uh, the tailor-made guy, uh, I've never met him, never seen him, don't know anything about him. And don't know if he even knows this part of Ohio exists. There is not the first bit of tailor-made representation in this area. Uh, however, uh, I've got enough connection that I think if I was to call him, I could probably get parts and I should check that out. Uh, but no, I can't. Uh, if you look at a lot of the testing, the driver seems to be doing very, very well. Uh, I don't know anything about the 435 as of yet. I might have played Nana this week. <laughs> Nania. All right. Well done for you. How did that go? Did you get, oh, did you get those clubs that we talked about? That we talked you through and did they work? All right. RT full pull. This is awesome. Well done. Mira Love from Sweden. All right. Another Sweden. Krister, we got some, we got some customer. We got some buddies for you. And Mira is a very nice iron to be sure. And he said it, he liked it so much, he said it twice. All righty. John Jabor. Hey, buddy. From South Dakota. Nice. South Dakota. My dad went to South Dakota University. You know, the, what is it? No, South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits, I believe they are. He went there on a, uh, Music scholarship way back in the era of four fingered golf or four fingered ball gloves. So, yeah. Uh, is this thing going to follow me? Nope. Good. Uh, where the sun is finally shining. Nice. Here, JJ Hope and Sturgis. Oh, you, you're going to, what? You're not ready to get busy just yet for all the cyclists that come out there. Here at JJ PGA Hope. Oh, good for you. Now we got a Sturgis contact, everybody. We can talk to John. Maybe hook us up with a Sturgis hat or something. All right. Flex question. Oh, this flex question could be a five-hour discussion. You are not kidding, sir. There's Robin saying hit the thumbs up again. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Alec Ball was not prog gone. Let's go. Smash that thumbs up. Emmanuel, please, thanks for the answer. Makes a lot of sense. You are more than welcome, sir, any time. I just want your game. <laughs> Pooey, what do you say, buddy? Hey, Jim and Robin, is the IM10 smoke? IM10 smoke similar to the T800 or any other brand that is similar or is UST Pro Force and the Burner Mini? I know they did a MTX prime shaft, but discontinued. Uh, ooh. Well, let's talk this one through, Pooey. All right. So is the IM10 smoke similar to the T800? 
or any other brand that's similar or the MST Pro Force in the burner? Well, if we're using the T800 as a, I'm going to have to look this one up. The T800 is not like the Pro Force. There, that is completely different. Okay, that is a uh, that is those those guys are not the same. Now, the new Pro Force that's in the burner Mini might be a different uh, a different thing altogether. But I'm not. It, it's nowhere near the T800. The T800 talks about. Uh, okay, now I know what you're talking about. The smoke. Okay. Uh, I'm doing a real quick work. Oh, it's the Hexel. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. All right, now that I've done about five seconds worth of reading, I've become an expert. Ooh. Uh... The IM-10 smoke, based on what the T-800, what Callaway had in there, yes. I would say those are very close to one another, but nowhere near the Pro Force. All right, that's two different animals altogether. The uh, the Pro, the IM-10 smoke, the real what makes it so much different is, is that it has that Hexel weave in it that is very much different than all the rest. If you notice, it did not st it's not something that stayed around very long. Is a very stiff like shaft that I believe the T800 is actually stiffer than that. But the uh, but this the smoke was we had it in here for a while and it's not bad, but you got to really get after it to make it work. RSG from St. Louis, how are you? Scotty Scheffler wins the Masters, but here's the crazy part: Scheffler has not shot over par in the this year in tournament play. I'm putting the I'm putting the knock on wood on there. Let's hope we can keep going. I like that. I like that a lot. The honest black man. All right. How do you fit irons to a guy who opens the face and hits a cut shot? Well, it depends on whether or not that person wants to hit a cut shot or not. Uh if you have an open face and you don't want to hit a cut shot, the best thing to do is not hit a not to hit it with an open face. Now, if that's the only you know you have some sort of mental block where you can that's the only thing that you can do, then what I would and you want to have the face close on yourself like that, then what I would suggest is something maybe with a little bit of offset in it. I wouldn't go too gross because it might it might trigger you in a different way as far as uh, opening it more. Okay. Because the way that your eye sees it, it might be, it might go a certain way. But the other part is, is that you would change a profile of a shaft such that it helps you close the club more. Much like we were talking about earlier with these, you know, the modus stuff. If you wanted to close the club instead of like we were talking with Charlie, where he was be better with the Neo that person might be better with the regular GH product or like a KBS Tour 90, that kind of stuff. That's where I could probably try and take them at first. Club fitting when done right complements your swing motion so that you can focus on technique on flight of your, flight of your equipment. There you go. There's another one. Happy tax day. You know what? It is. Well done. Good call. All right. Here's a good one. What's the difference between a taxidermist and the IRS? A, taxima, a taxidermist just takes the skin. Oh, good one, dude. Good one. I'm there. All right, Mr. Moody, what do you say, sir? This guy showed us yesterday that there was not only, not only one way to swing a club. Remember Mo Norman? Yes. And look at how he was jumping. I don't, I didn't, you know, he was still jumping. It, the, what really, uh, really brought that to attention was on the 18th when he was just trying to hit one straight and he did, he hit it straight into that bunker and you just knew he knew what he was going to do right after that. He was going to take that nine iron or whatever it was and throw it up onto the green and just be absolutely awesome with it. And, and he did, and he did it very well. John Jabor masters weekend. X Golf RC SD gave away 15 sets of used clubs to veterans in Black Hill. Really? 
graduate Mac Talbot, owner of X Golf RCSD. Well, nicely done. That's pretty cool. You know, I got a box of old golf clubs sitting in here that we are going to send to the military so that when they were over in the sand hitting golf clubs and just beating them and just, they could have left them there. And uh, I never I never got the address, so I never sent them. Maybe it's time to figure that out again. Chris Greenslade from wet and windy west of the UK. No, okay, we're getting a lot of the UK representation. I have a slow swing and thinking of purchasing Mizuno ST230 and wondering what would be the best, STX or Z. Okay, well. Oh, we got a max. Never mind. I'll be right back. X. Okay, I want to show you. So here's the difference. On the top, nothing. All right, now you see it reflects my light just fine. And if you look at it, there's the, you got the, the woven crown and it goes into the black. Very cool looking. Into the face. Uh, absolutely nothing. All right, absolutely nothing. They have the same kind of face. And it says uh, B titanium, right, on both of them. Same pattern, all right. On the sole, on the sole, that's where it's, the difference is at. If you look, let's go here first. This is the STZ. The STZ is more neutral, okay. This is the neutral club. And I wanted to make sure I was looking at something here. Okay, the neutral club. And uh, and you can tell because if you look, see this uh, graphite piece that goes right here. It's very, 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 uh, has a lot of symmetry, right? There's as much on the top as removed as on the bottom. So everything is very symmetrical. Has the very cool new uh, cortex in it and very, very forgiving. A very big spin killer. Keep that in mind. Neutral, okay? The STX, if you look at it, is not the same. It only has it goes out this way. All right. And there's not as much symmetry down in here. So by and large, by the mere fact of the not removing the weight here, it makes it heavier down in this area. And it's more to help you get the club face closed. I'm not going to say draw bias, but it actually is for that kind of stuff. And again, it has the exact same cortex in it. It's just about weight being right here. So if you are missing, if you are missing to the right as a right-handed golfer, you're doing the, you know, you're hitting the fade or hitting the block, then the STX is where you'd want to go. If you got good control over your golf ball, then the Z would be a much better choice. There you go. And good luck over there in UK. Michael Moody, Bernard Lager, and Ale. Oh, Bernard Lager and Halloran have more wins worldwide than anyone. No one teaches you to swing like a Longer or an Irwin. You are correct. Looking forward to seeing it. Okay. There's Taylor Varney. What are your thoughts on LA golf shafts? Taylor, I'm not a fan. Uh, I don't like talking bad about golf companies because if they're out there, the, the companies themselves will fit somebody. However, if you're asking me personally, I am not a fan. Why is that? Number one, they don't fit me. All right. Uh, that's the reason why. Those things are made for uh, guys that are just going to get after it, swing for the fences. You know, look at Br Bryson DeChambeau when he had all his muscles and his weight. Uh, you got a DJ who just knocks the ball, just knocks the cover clean off of it. It's for the aggressive, and they market to the aggressive young golfer. Well, I'm not an aggressive young golfer, so it doesn't do anything for me. Now, they do have a lot in the way of, and I have built several iron shafts, several iron sets with the LA golf shaft. I got to say, they do have a cool look. 
Their consistency still needs a lot of work. They're still a budding shaft company. They need they need to they need to work on a little get their consistency a little tighter if they want to. And the reason why I say this is they're charging a premier price, so they ought to be a premier shaft. And that would mean that the specs, the flex, everything comes out should be really consistent into a smaller range. My finding is it's not. Now, is it is it a grossly offset? No, it's not grossly offset. But uh, there are other companies that are just spanking them in, in that particular area. And that's the reason why. Now, their putter shafts, putter shafts work really good. I put plenty of those in for uh, markup and uh, Columbus does fine with them. John Lamb, what are you saying? Calgary supposed to snow again. What? And did get two rounds in. Wife shot 93, 91. Nice. I was two over through 12 in the first round. Then wheels came off. All right. Well done. That Hey, at least you're out there, brother. That's good. Hey, PZ got the the Brava shafts for the demos. Put one in my personal driver. Out with a tour ADA and in this goes. Uh-oh, we got a new gamer. All right. I know, too. And then the wheels came off. And then the rain came down. I was really happy and then my brain got in the way. Isn't that the way it always is? Is Cleveland the most underrated driver of the year? Possibly. I hit it, and it is stupid forgiving. It really, really is. It's not going to win a distance contest, and I think because they make the club too long. Uh, you know, I, I, I tested one. I'm looking right at him. I got a couple in the shop. The... Uh, had the ascent, which was very, very, uh, very, very light. I did not like that one. And then they had one that I believe had the Tensai model in it, and I smoked that thing. I tried hitting that thing bad, and it would just keep going where it was supposed to. And uh, if you don't mind giving up a few yards to be in the middle, it's all good. Very strength was technically called hoop strength. There you go. GA Wan. All right, new here, listening and learning. Well, congratulations, buddy. Thanks for showing up for us. Wayne, welcome. Oops. Ah, yep. John Lamb Golf Works has the OM shaft options that were on irons and drivers way back. TM is the site going back over there, all their irons. If I find a link, he'll post it. Okay. Oh, well, here we go. X6505X. All right. I have a Titleist 975D I've been messing with, messing, I've been messing with in my bag as a mini driver. Okay. The dispersion is not ideal on my miss hits. Would it benefit from a modern X Flex shaft? It depends. There's the best answer in golf ever. It depends. If you are using it as a two wood or a mini driver, maybe you would want to actually choke down on it and give it a few swings. Instead of a 45 or even a 45 and a half, which I doubt it is, it's probably closer to 45, choke down to make it a 44 or 44 and a half and then see what happens. If your dispersion is, if you're missing, and that's probably the reason why, right? The, the, when you find the ideal length, then you start finding the middle of the club more regularly, and then your shots become more consistent. Now, and then you can plan from there and figure out what your misses truly are as opposed to just spraying it everywhere. Now, if you have a... And keep in mind that the 975 eats up about that much tip space, about three and a half, three and a half, almost four inches of tip space. And that was the reason why those clubs played so stiff is because you would stick a club in there with three inches of tip and it would eat it all up and there would be no lower, there would be no lower kick point. So you had to be a, a very late releaser of the golf club. 
if you wanted to, to do any kicking whatsoever, you had to do some real research and get and get one with a like a six inch tip or a five inch tip in order for it to even come close to working. And you could get a an S flex and tip it maybe a half of an inch and it'd be right where you needed to go. But first and foremost, what I would do is I would go down to about 44 inches, give it a ride, and see what happens first. And if you're fading the ball and you're not, you know, and let's say if you got a ladies flex in there and you're swinging 110 mile an hour, then yeah, probably need to bump it up a little bit. But if you're in a stiff flex and you're fading it, and chances are no, it's probably need to go the other way. This is from 2013. All right. Matt, getting Titleist. Ah, here we go. You got the 350s. Okay, very good. Project X 5.5, ordered hard stepped one. Standard grips in the box. I can cut them down how I want. Ask Tom for abs. I asked Tom. <laughs> yes, you would have to, right? You would certainly have to. That would. Uh, that's almost a must, right? That's almost a must. That that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty good, Matt. Oh, that's funny. And six five zero six is from Rhode Island. Okay, now we're all over the place. Any thoughts on SMT putters? I didn't know SMT made a putter. I knew they were big on drivers and they were big on, they were big on, well, they were sort of big on irons. We had them for years. We're talking about the same SMT though. I don't know. I didn't even know they made a putter, Alec Baldwin, on not prop gun. Michael Moody. I've got the Project 5.5 and my hot metal pros and love them. Very good. Here's a new one. Cameron, what do you say? Went to the driving range today, hit my drives 230 with 250 or carry 254. Sim Max, a biometrics prototype and stiff. Good piece of advice. I go with I go with his swing and speed and not power. Yes. Yes, not power. Basically, what it is, power is like this. And power has a lot of tension in it. And that is hard to bring clubs around when you do that. When you swing to get speed, you have to be uh, tension-free. And tension-free is speed. Unfortunately, for a lot of people who work with their hands, it translates into weakness. And it's really hard to get over that until you actually have a little bit of success with it. And with success breeds confidence and acceptance. Yes, it was, Charlie. I appreciate that. That's why I'm trying to get through that one bottle right now. It's going to take me a while and in order to convince Mr. McGolf to go back. Good evening from Lombard. Better late than never. You, sir, I appreciate it. Ben Ross, super underrated, part owned by American Golf, and I believe a similar PJ Dick. Oh, okay. Their driver was in the Ventus stock. Oh, very cool. Nicely done. Okay, very cool. I do believe they are underrated too. There's a few of those over there. Have you ever tried, you've been over there, have you ever tried the uh, the Orca brand? I know the Alex is over there. And uh, I don't think the driver's going to knock anybody's socks off, but it is a pretty decent one. Their irons are really nice, particularly their Forge product. Uh, I, gave them a, I gave them some input on their very first, those... The Model 10s, I like them. I got a set. In fact, not right there, but I do have a set. Uh, I do tend to like them, but that, I don't know if they're on the same plane as Ben Ross, though. Mike, what do you say, man? Cheers from Detroit. Have you ever fitted to Tom Wachon's 3-8 inch link progression idea? Yes. Yes, I have. Recently tried it with some older, and I like it. Very cool. What I try to do, Mike, is I engage the 3-8 inch progression when I'm building shorter clubs, uh, what I do is when I start getting about an inch short in clubs, I do that three eighths inch progression so that the pitching wedge is not a is not a Tonka toy, and and it tends to work out pretty good. But yeah, I like it. What I call that is, and and Mr. Wishon and I have talked talked about it, it's kind of like a poor man's MOI fitting, and uh, and it works. Yep, we did that one. 
Randall, what do you say, buddy? First time joining. Well, thank you. Club maker from Golfsmith since 2007. Well, very cool. You're one of the last ones because th- Golfsmith was leaving really close to about that time frame. So congrats. All right. Funny story. I had to uh, spent the night in my car in a gas station on 23 in Waverly back in February. Oh, what? After water pump went out in the morning, pretty cold night. <laughs> Well, yeah, I know about where you were then. I had to wait for until the mechanic got out of church the next morning before I get my car fixed. 12 hours, 230 and 14 bolts later, he's on his way. Well, good. I'm glad they didn't take you for too much. Michael Moody's good to hear. Spent the last two hours hitting different shafts and settled on these. Great feel for me. Match up with a swing motion as well. Lighter weight than the 6.0 felt better. There you go. And apparently he's a... Uh, Matt has slowed his aggression down because if you ever seen what he did before, it was, uh, it was almost life threatening. Hexel. I think we used that in interflex shaft about 17 years. Yeah, probably. And they, uh, and, and they just, they touted it as a new technology. John Cherry. Hello all. Just got home from being a volunteer marshal at the hoodie and blow fit. Oh, hoodie, hoodie and blowfish. Monday at the Masters fundraiser here in North Carolina or North Myrtle Beach. Oh, nice. Very cool. Well done. There's hello, Cameron. Hello, that one. And pretty, uh, pretty nice or Oh, pretty nice irons. Orca has been Ross. Orca's is L6 700. Okay. It's a little bit, a little bit pricey. Very good. Okay, guys, we got down to the very, very bottom of this. And as always, I, I encourage you to like and subscribe. Uh, like and subscribe. Hit that bell across the bottom so you get the subscriptions, all the stuff I say in all my videos. Watch tomorrow for a video on the how we worked over those Tacoma co- uh, copper with the DLC. And it was diamond-like carbon is what that stands for. And see how we put them together. They actually turned out very well, very consistent. And you get to see what happens. Alrighty, so as as usual, look at this getting out of here. There we go. Like and subscribe, what it says across the bottom. As usual, guys, thank you so very much. Looks like we had a bunch of new folks, particularly from the UK and here in the middle of the US. And don't forget, we are out in San, South Dakota. And as always, guys, uh, appreciate it. And let's see your scores go low.